and also and Nathan from Marble Hill, Missouri. And boy, I tell you what, that's a big shiny metropolis these days. Guess what he sent me in the way of CDs? He heard our discussion that we had quite some time back about the the dear, the sweet, the beautiful, the gorgeous cousin Ruby Ruby Star and sent me five Ruby Star CDs. And boy, howdy. Uh, she's on the cover of every one of them, as you would expect. And I want to thank Nathan for that. And finally, and this was amazing. Because I've, I think I mentioned our, our, my friends Brandon and Aiden from it, it, the, their store over there in Howell, Michigan used to be Galaxy VR Arcade, but now they have rebranded because they have expanded and they're Galaxy Records, and they have records, and they have all kinds of cool other stuff as well as the games and the the porn. joyousness and everything. There, there might, it might or might not be any porn involved. I don't, <laughs> probably not with Aiden, but I don't know about that Brandon. <laughs> what, what? Did you say there are kids going to this place? Well, no, well, no it's, 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 I don't, it's fun for all. But it, they're over, they're on East Grand River Avenue in Howell, Michigan. If the authorities want to investigate, but anyway, listen for the howl. <clears throat> yes, they'll howl in the middle of the night. They sent me a box of of records, actual vinyl records, of a few other things. But the impressive things were the records, including a '60s Alfred Hitchcock presents Ghost Stories for Kids, you know, uh, cover. And the disco single, that's a 12-inch, 33 and a third record for you younger kids that didn't live through the disco era, but it's um, of Chase. Uh, cause I've got it, obviously. I had it 30-something years ago, but I've my cover is so beaten up because I would record our cassettes for entrances. And I, back then... I carried all of my or all of our entrance music in multiple cassettes in my bag because generally, you know, on the regular towns, Crockett always had somebody carrying the music after a while when more people got music. But in the early days and everybody didn't have music, you would have to give the tape to the sound guy at the arena every night, and then I'd have to remember to fucking get it afterwards. And if we got chased out of town by a fucking rabid mob, I wouldn't get it, so I'd lose multiple tapes that way. And so I constantly was making more cassettes off of my disco single, so the cover's beat up, and it's all scratched up, and this one's a nice one. Um, Did the tape ever get eaten up at a show? Oh, God. We had anything from people who were operating the sound system who were, you know, the, it was the janitor and he didn't know how to work the shit to the old cassette playing systems in the buildings, eating a tape to a lot of times they started having uh, the ring announcer carry a boom box. And this was even in the WCW days, folks, in the early WCW days. I remember Tony Gillum carrying a, you know, a, a cassette tape case around at a fucking boom box. So if we were in a subpar building, you'd be at ringside and hold the microphone up to the fucking tape player. That's how I used to play music when I was a ring announcer, hold a microphone, the PA system up to the tape player at spot shows and shit. This was, it was not state of the art stuff back then, like it is today. And, um, and the, the midnight express, the chase disco single, I don't remember how long the album cut was, but the disco single was 13 minutes long. So you could make fucking, you know, uh, multiples of those and take as long as you needed to get to the ring or whatever the fuck and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, we used to lose all kinds of tapes and, and the, it was actually sometimes worse when the building people were in charge of doing it. Oh yeah. Give it to Joe over there. And, uh, it was, sometimes you'd have to actually have some stooge that you could do without during the show sit next to the sound guy to tell him here play this tape when this guy comes out here switch it real quick do this blah 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 because they wouldn't they didn't know music at wrestling was new at that point they hadn't been doing it were there any places that 
either didn't have a tape player or in the back, not like at ringside, there was actually a record player. I don't remember seeing a record player. To be honest, because actually that probably would not would not have even in the 80s they would have been long removed from that but in the Evansville Coliseum they had a pipe organ and they had one in the Louisville Gardens too oh, awesome. I think they still do uh there was a big organ in the Louisville Gardens and it had a history behind it but this pipe organ in the Evansville Coliseum you could walk right up to it and see it off the side of the stage and it had been because the Evansville Coliseum I'm pretty sure was built in the early 1900s and it had probably been there since the 20s or 30s and the old veterans that ran the because the evansville coliseum the it's like the war memorial coliseum the vfw or the veterans administrative organization there that's who rented it out and benefited from it and they were always sitting there to watch their shit right and they but next to this organ because we had been doing the thing where I would take my goddamn portable boombox tape player up and hold the microphone up to the speaker to play Lawler's entrance music or Handsome Jimmy's or whatever. And next to this pipe organ, they had this big uh, sound control board. It was, this is 1979, 80, and it was probably 10 years old then, but it was primitive enough I could figure it out because it's like putting a stereo together. I said, if I just get an RCA phono plug adapter to plug in there, I can play my tape player through their sound system. So I, and they're like, boy, don't touch anything. I was like, guys, I think I got this, right? I think I can do this. And I plugged it through and showed them. I said, now watch, when I turn this volume and I press this, and it's going over the PA system. They're like, well, goddamn. But shit like that. But it, back to Brandon and Aiden, who by now have, <clears throat> had a chance to get rid of all the porn that might have been in the basement <laughs> before the authorities arrived. They also sent a Billy Paul album. Oh, nice. Uh, that has me and Mrs. Jones. And guess what else? Uh, here, well, there's other things, but the big thing, the soundtrack album to Deliverance. With dueling oh, banjos and oh, everything. Oh, yippee. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I no. Would love wait, to listen to that with the whole family. It's a very rare, it, that's a rare piece, but also it ha, I forgot that it has all the songs from the movie or that were even played in the background of the movie. And it has also one of Mama Cornette's favorite songs on the soundtrack <laughs> album of Deliverance. I'll have you know. Did Ned Beatty sing it? No, I can't remember. Actually, I think they played it in the background, but it brought it to mind. But there is immediately, so Brandon Aiden, I thank you. The point is, I open up and there's Deliverance and I flip it over and there's one of Mama Cornette's favorite songs, Mountain Dew. Well, they call it that good old Mountain Dew and them that refuse it are few. I'll shut up my mug if you'll fill up my jug full of that good old Mountain Dew. She used to sing that to me when I would sit on her knee or, well, Actually, I was a fat little kid, and she was bony, so I'd sit next to her knee, <laughs> and she would sing. She would sing to me now. My brother Bill's got a still on the hill where he brews him a gallon or two. Buzzards in the sky gets drunk; they can't fly from that good old Mountain Dew. Now do some Billy Paul. My Uncle Mort, he sawed <laughs> off his shore. He measures about four foot two. But he thinks he's a giant when you give him a pint of that good old Mountain Dew. Now that's not Philadelphia International. Well, you know, hey, Isaac Hayes could have adapted it. If it had hit the Superfly or the Shaft's Big Score soundtrack, it could have been a whole new audience. But anyway, Brandon and Aiden, thank you for... I don't know why it was Christmas in... In April, all of a sudden, but people just, they normally they want to take, take, take. They write me and ask me for things, even free things sometimes, the gall of them. But in this case, it was give, 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 not take, 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 take your booty, take your, all it's right. It's not take your booty, it's shake your booty. What are you even singing? Well, you got to take your booty somewhere to shake it. Right, where are you going to take this show? And then bring it back. This is um, your show.